Wow, Etsy is really keeping us on our toes this month, aren't they? They just released Gift Mode, which is a shopping experience that lets you filter the search results to find specifically the best gift for the person you're shopping for and the occasion that you're shopping for. So if you go to etsy.com slash gift dash mode, you can use this wizard to find that perfect gift. Hi, I'm Julie Berninger from Gold City Ventures, and I'm the host of the Crickets to Cha-Chings podcast, where we help Etsy sellers get all the data they need to be successful. And also, I'm the co-founder of Gold City Ventures. So today, we're going to be talking about this new release that just came out this past week. And if you're following along on our YouTube channel for Gold City Ventures, you can see what this wizard looks like. But if you're just listening, go to etsy.com slash gift dash mode, and you can check this out yourself. So right now, Etsy says, gift mode makes gifting extra easy. It asks you who you're shopping for, and it lists like two dozen people, friend, husband, wife, partner, somebody else. So I'm just going to play along here and click husband. And then I'm going to click next question. And it asks me what's the occasion. And it gives me a bunch of choices like birthday, housewarming, just because Mother's Day, I'm going to pick Valentine's Day. And then the third question, they ask, what are they into? And it says choose three or more for better suggestions. So there are things like arts and culture, great food, music, their pets, the outdoors. So I'm thinking of my husband for an upcoming Valentine's Day gift. He's into the outdoors. He is into the gym, but they're calling it sports. Okay. And let's see, he's into peace and quiet. He definitely is. We have two young kids, so we can't get much of that. Um, I'll try peace and quiet. And now I'm clicking show gift ideas. And it's the search results now are being sectioned down by the sports fan, the self-care enthusiast, or the football fan. Oh, they give me the basketball fan too. So it looks like they're categorizing these results by archetypes of people or avatars of people. So let's just click into, let's see, they don't have the gym. Man, my husband's into the gym. So you know what? We're going to do the sports fan. So I'm clicking show all ideas and now it's showing me a whole bunch of things. Now, depending on what you guys sell, th these are all pretty much physical products. Looks like some print on demand. I'm not seeing any printables, but for those of you that do sell printables, you can imagine on February 13th, if someone selects Valentine's Day, they're probably going to start switching all of these results to printables. And if they haven't, if Etsy hasn't realized yet that they're going to have to figure out a solution if someone picks a holiday that's about to happen, but it's impossible for someone to ship an item to them, then printables would probably be a good solution there. So I'm sure they figured this out, but if they haven't figured it out yet and you sell printables, or even if you don't, maybe last minute gift occasions could be something that you add to your shop. Now, for those of you that sell the physical items, I'm going to cover some of the things that Etsy wrote in their seller handbook. They did a little press release or I guess blog post on this to help us sellers figure out how to take advantage of this new feature. And also they need us to, if you think about it this way, Etsy needs us to tell them which section to put our products in. Because this whole gift mode thing doesn't work if they have no clue what gift makes sense for our products. So how to take advantage of this, be one of the first sellers that makes their site extremely giftable. And what I'm hearing from this, Etsy knows people are shopping for gifts on their platform. They're trying to make it easier for people to find gifts. They're trying to make it easier for us to make sales. So our job right now is to go through our listings and figure out which ones can be gifted and help Etsy get what sections they should go in. So Etsy gave us some advice. For those of you that are new here, I recorded two episodes prior to this. The one that I did just before this was a 40-minute SEO deep dive on Etsy's latest publications on search engine optimization and how to make sure that your shop is found in the search results and also found in Google search results. So if you have not listened or watched to that episode, you can get it on the Crickets to Cha-Ching's podcast on, on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Google, wherever you listen to podcasts. Or you can go to the goldcityventures.com YouTube channel and you can find where I published about the SEO stuff. Now, that is really, really important. And I'm not going to repeat any of the stuff that I said, because if those of you listened to me for 40 minutes, you got the whole thing there. Uh, but I also want to say the previous episode to that was the holiday episode. And I talked about how Etsy was encouraging us as sellers almost to think about how our products could be gifted for the holidays. And they mentioned some interesting things. Like they said, they 
I was reading between the lines and they kind of made it sound like they didn't have enough gifts for older kids. They didn't have enough gifts for teenagers. They had a whole list of like people that they didn't seem to have a lot of search results on. And I see those as opportunities. So if you have any products that could be for older kids, for example, but you didn't think of it that way, or maybe you could add a, a keyword that Etsy says is highly searched, doesn't have as much competition. That's how I kind of read what they were putting out there. Go back to that episode, the holiday episode that I did, I think two or three episodes ago, and that's where you're going to get some information. But anyways, for particularly today for gift mode, what are the things that Etsy is saying to us about this? First, they said, add sections in your shop that make it easier for people looking for gifts. They didn't specifically say what you should name them or anything like that, but I'm guessing, let's say that your shop, you sell, like for example, they used gifts for dog moms a lot, or they use it in this example. They used it once in the in the blog article. So maybe you have a section gifts for dogs mom, gift for dogs mom, or maybe you know gifts for aunts or aunties or whatever. You could add sections to your shop that highlight terms that people use when they're shopping for gifts. That makes a lot of sense to me. One thing that they mentioned, which is kind of like a hold up, hey, oh, let's pay attention to this. They did mention that if you want to add listings to more than two, or if you want to say that your listing could be used for two different types of gifts, like maybe gifts for dog moms and gifts for aunts or whatever, they suggested multiple listings. And to me, that was like, what Etsy? That was always something that the Etsy guru coach community suggested. I, I'll be honest with you, I never was a big fan of this because I felt like if you accidentally made the listings too close to each other, they would compete with each other. It would get confusing for customers. Like what's the difference between this one and that one? And I, I never really saw it executed that well. That being said, I can see how it's advantageous. And yes, admittedly myself, I would put two of the same listings in the same shop and kind of make one marketed towards one type of person and one marketed towards another type of person. And I would make the keywords completely different. You are not allowed to do that across shops, by the way. It has to be within the same shop, according to the Etsy seller handbook. Don't fact check me on that, but Etsy doesn't, I mean, Etsy doesn't want two shops with the same exact listings because they're trying to be a handmade marketplace. But anyways, in the same shop, they're telling you, they're telling us in this blog article today that you can list the same item twice in your shop and put it in two different sections to help this gift mode thing. Why why they don't just create some sort of data attribute? We can add gifts for dog mom and gifts for aunt in the same listing. Why don't they don't just do it that way? I don't know, but I guess maybe they think that people are browsing shops looking for gifts, so they want to make it easier for people. I don't know. The next thing that they said, they said make sure that your tags are really descriptive for gifting. So they talked about adding gifts for dog moms. They mentioned putting tags for gifts at certain price points, like gifts under $20. I know that's probably important for the holidays. Gifts under $50. You can imagine how people are shopping for gifts. They have a budget. So they said not only maybe putting that in the tags, but then also thinking about that with your price points. Like if you're deciding between two price points and you're accidentally going to be like a dollar over. I mean, they didn't say it this way, but I got the impression like, hey, just consider that people shop based on price. So don't be $51, be $49 or something. That's kind of how I interpreted what they said. I'll link to the blog article here so you can interpret what they said with your own way, but that's how I interpreted it. One thing that they said that I thought was really cool, and I never thought about this before because I haven't actually sold Handmade in a long time and I didn't sell a giftable product. With the Bachelorette Party tattoos, they weren't really gifts. They uh, That's what I sold. And they, they're more event celebration stuff. But they mentioned if you gift wrap, put that in the picture and say that you gift wrap in the description and whatever and, and make it an option or whatever. And the reason that they said that is because people are shopping on Etsy and they're buying gifts and they're shipping it directly to the person. And that could help probably help conversion. They didn't say help conversion, but that, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I have sent gifts on Etsy and I never really thought about actually having them be delivered wrapped, but yeah, that would be nice, right? And I know Amazon does that and you get that Amazon bag, like that really thick, <laughs> that really thick canvas bag. If you've ever shipped uh, somebody a gift wrap thing on Amazon, you pay an extra couple bucks and they get this like really, really thick bag that 
I don't know what they're going to do with that again. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about if you've received one or you've sent one. But yeah, I mean, Etsy is knowing they're really stepping into their gift shep- shopping destination as a destination for gift shopping is what I'm saying. Okay. The last two, I mentioned pricing. The really last one, they mentioned processing times and being ready to ship as things to highlight. And I know that sometimes can be frustrating because they're kind of encouraging us to do things which seem like they're squeezing us a little bit, like with the processing times and the shipping. But I can understand from the perspective of the buyer why that information is helpful so they can get a general sense of, hey, I'm gifting it to someone for their birthday. And is it too late? Is it not? I want to make sure it gets there in time. All all those things. So I I see where this is coming from. And, you know, if you have that information that you can make clear to the customer or you want to update it or whatever, then do so. Overall, though, I think this is an awesome thing for us as sellers. And anytime Etsy does something like this, there's like two reactions from the seller community. The first reaction, people are freaking out. Oh, they're making me do this, blah, blah. But then the second reaction is like, hey, if you are the first person or one of the first people to lean into this, then that's a huge advantage. And, you know, you don't have this many opportunities to jump in front of other sellers um, that often, right? Like often a lot of sellers complain like, hey, there's this shop that's been around for 20 years and their tags aren't that good and all this stuff, but they seem to always get on the first page of search results because they just have been around a while, right? And you're new and you're like, oh, it's so frustrating. Well, here is your chance because they released this new feature, beat that older shop to the punch. And if you are the older shop, then get in there yourself too and optimize for gifting. Check out my SEO episode so you can see everything I said regarding the tags and the titles and the descriptions because those are places where you're going to help Etsy figure out what type of gift your product is because it's using all those that data to figure out where to put you in this gift mode and where to put your listings. So go check out that episode if you haven't yet. I'll link to it below. But you, this is a big advantage and I think we're getting a good chance to kind of assert our shops here. There'll be people that don't adopt this and there'll be people that do. And assuming, you know, it takes off with customers, they like the gift mode, then this could be good. I'm excited about it. So there's two more things that I wanted to talk about in this episode today, and this will be a little bit of a quicker one. The next thing, Etsy changed something maybe a couple weeks ago. They were allowing third parties like basically other companies to use email address data from buyers. And some of you may have signed up with companies. I know Everbee did this. I think Aweber, where they had these integrations with Etsy, where when someone buys from your shop, you would get the customer email address and you could email them. And in essence, this seemed like a really good thing for sellers. Etsy recently sent out information saying that they don't, they're not allowing this anymore. And I see why, because I bet there were sellers that were sending kind of rogue emails or the buyer just had no idea who the seller was. A lot of times when people are shopping on Etsy, we wish that they would hear our brand and understand that they're buying from us specifically. But often people are shopping so fast, they might not specifically know it's you or your shop that they're shopping from. And then they get this series of emails from you that don't make sense. They think it's spam and they just get mad at Etsy or whatever. So I can see why Etsy decided that they're not going to do this anymore. That being said, I know it was a bummer from some sellers that were collecting emails. And for anyone that doesn't know this, there are certain types of emails that you can send and certain that they're borderline or questionable. And it has, in the US at least, it has to do with what's called the CAN Spam Act. And basically, you can send, and by the way, I'm not a lawyer, but you can send transactional emails where you can talk to the customer about the order, you can talk about when you know, it's going to be shipped, anything particular to the order. But you can't start marketing to them your other five listings and want, and want them to buy it and start telling them about your Instagram and all this stuff unless they specifically opt into it. So there were third-party companies that were helping sellers do both. And to fit the latter situation where they want someone wanted to send marketing emails, you would give the customer a prompt to opt in to send emails. So that's a bummer. And I know a lot of 
companies like these data companies were really excited to offer this feature and a lot of sellers were testing it and now it's just not happening this way anymore. There's still ways to collect the customer email address and customers can opt in to get marketing emails from you or you know transaction emails, but it's not going to be as easy as it was with it having direct integrations with these other third parties. So if you got a random email that was about, hey, this company you use, maybe it's like a data analytics tool, they're like a policy change has happened. A lot of people were freaking out in the Facebook groups thinking, oh, I'm going to lose E-Rank, access to my favorite tool, whatever. No, I think Etsy just sent a blank in emails for anyone that has third-party integration set up. And E-Rank actually never collected email address, from my understanding. And the companies that did, they, they're they now pivoting to do other things. But it, it's not, at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. And truthfully, from the people I know who've collected email addresses from customers on Etsy, if your shop wasn't super specific around a niche, sometimes those email addresses weren't the most valuable if you were selling a lot of different spaces. But if you did sell in one niche and you had your customers there, I can see how this could be a little disappointing. So I just wanted to cover that because that was something new that came up and it doesn't apply to all of you, but for the ones that it did apply to, that's sort of what went down. Now, the last thing, I know I mentioned TikTok a lot. And for someone that took forever to even get on the app, and I still don't know how I feel about this app, I don't really use it for businessy stuff. I actually use it more for personal stuff, whereas Instagram I use for businessy things, which is interesting. But I, earlier this today, I bought something on TikTok shop. And if anyone doesn't know, TikTok is rolling out kind of a very low content way of shopping. And you can just go on someone like a creator's profile and click the TikTok shop, shop button. And then you'll see what they have and you can buy it. And they're actually offering a lot of 20% off coupons. The thing I bought today was 20% off. And then I just entered in my information and clicked send and it shipped to me. And the landing page that the creator had on there had like a little video and they had information on what I was buying. But because I followed them and I saw their videos, I knew what I was getting. Like I wasn't unclear. I, I kind of, I went to there specifically looking for that item. I knew that they sold this item. And the whole time I'm buying this today, I'm like, man, this is, this is the beginning of something big. Like I, yeah, there's Etsy and there's Amazon, there's these big platforms, but they don't really, they don't attach to creators quite the same way. And I know Etsy tried, they had this feature explore. I don't know if any of you tested it out. I tested it out last year where you could add videos to the Etsy seller app, but they don't really have a lot of users that are shopping Etsy in that way, like with video. And for whatever reason, they tried it and it's not there on everyone's Etsy site right now. So it clearly didn't take off. But we all know on sites like TikTok, really like some influencers are convincing people to buy things based on their videos. And I bet there's some of you listening right now who you are making sales because either you're making videos of your products on TikTok or some other person did. I mean, there are people that students, I'm in the a digital product space right now, and there are students in my course that are like, hey, I put my, my garden planner up on TikTok and I got a, you know, a bunch of sales. Or even myself, I put one of my bachelorette scavenger hunts up on TikTok and it had 17,000 views. I think it's on, maybe it has over 20,000 right now. And people aren't necessarily clicking from that video on TikTok directly to my shop but maybe they went to my profile and then they clicked into my shop or maybe they just searched bachelorette scavenger hunts and they tried to find it on the Etsy app. I don't know. But it's it's definitely a way that people shop now. And I've used TikTok. So the reason I'm telling you this is I feel like it's one of those times where there are people that are going to be early adopters to this and they're going to use TikTok shop and they're going to get rewarded for it because TikTok really they these social media companies love finding ways to monetize, right? Like they can either do advertising, but the, you can't really do that many ads on on TikTok. I mean, people wouldn't use it if there were ads everywhere. And even on Instagram, it's hard to do so many ads. But if they can monetize through transactions and they can use these creators and partner with them and they can make money and kind of be like pseudo e-commerce companies, they're going to really push that. So the, you can imagine the first couple people that put these TikTok shops together. And by the way, I tried to set one up for my Etsy shop. and 
when you're going through the process, you're like, should I be giving TikTok my license? Because they have to verify you're a real person. And you're like, okay, like I'm taking a gamble here. Um, good luck. Like, is my information going to get stolen? But I did it. It took me, it didn't take me that long. It literally took me like an hour. Um, and by the way, this was a very like distracted hour because I am a very reluctant TikTok user. Like I'm mad. I don't want to say I'm mad I have to do this, but you know what it's like when you feel like you have to be on all the places and all the platforms and it's like, oh, another thing. But I just feel like this is such a huge opportunity. And even what if you have like a one bestseller? Like a lot of us, when we go through our shops, like we may have a lot of listings, but there's re they're really the one or two things that are really like the most popular things. Just put like that one. Take that one thing, make a little video. You might not be having a video, put it on TikTok, open the TikTok shop, put that one thing there. And maybe TikTok will start showing it to people and you don't have to do anything. Because I have a feeling that they are really, really incentivized to make this whole e-commerce thing work out and they're going to be pushing stuff. And when I did set up the TikTok shop, it sent me this email, which gave me access to an analytics dashboard, where for those of you who are a data nerd like me, you can search a whole bunch of things and you get good information there. Now, I'm not an expert on this. I'm not going to be teaching anyone this. I just started it myself. But I just have the feeling that this is going to be one of those things where maybe six months from now, I invite somebody on the podcast that heard this and they're like, oh, yeah, like I just forced myself to do it. Like I ordered a coffee from Starbucks and I sat down and I just did it one day. And next thing you know, I made like $10,000. And then the rest of us are going to be mad like, oh, we should have done it, right? Like we've just been putting this off. So anyways, um, maybe this will be the, the push of like, hey, I'm going to put my best seller on TikTok shop. I'm going to go and make some shop sections in my Etsy shop profile that cater to this gift mode thing, maybe a basketball fan or gifts for dad or whatever applies to what you sell. And let's just see, like this is, you know, how long would this take? I think what I said in this episode today, I think the gift mode thing, if you think that your items already are giftable, I think you could do this in 30 minutes. I think you can create a new shop section, whatever, make two that are relevant, go through your, I get nervous touching the best listings, but they told us to duplicate listings. Like maybe you could duplicate a listing and then write the whole thing, you know, for a basketball fan. If you're not already doing that, who knows? And stick them in the new shop listing sections. Then you call you call that a day on the Etsy side and then go to TikTok, open up the TikTok shop, show the company TikTok your license like I did and hope for the best. And then uh, you you put your best listing there. Upload the video or picture that you already have. Probably, I mean, if you have a video, that's good. If you have a picture, um, that's good. And then, you know, copy your description and then just call it a day and then see what happens. You don't have to do it for 100 listings. I think that's where people get overwhelmed. They try to like overdo it. And at the end of the day, it's like a Pareto principle. 20% of the inputs are like 80% of the outputs. So just focus on the best sellers. Don't go all over the place and see what happens. So anyways... I think there's this is 2024 is going to be the year where the people that you can outsmart other people. This is going to be the year because you can you can outwork other people, I guess, if you just be a little bit clever and creative with things and be a little bit of an early adopter because a lot of stuff's changing. And if you can be one of the first people to ride the wave here, I think it could be good. So anyways, I'll let you go. Uh, this is Julie Berninger from Gold City Ventures, and this is the Crickets to Cha-Chings podcast. Can't wait to chat with you guys again next episode. Um, oh, and I should mention this in the outro. You can always email us team at goldcityventures.com and make any special requests for this podcast. I actually had someone offer to, they're auditing our ePrintables course, which is our course that teaches how to sell printables on Etsy, but it also teaches data analytics and they're auditing it from the handmade seller perspective to let me know like specifically how to package this information in a way that helps not only the digital product seller, but also the handmade seller, the POD seller, whatever seller, whatever space you might sell in. So thank you. You know who you are, who's doing that. And if you guys have any ideas of how we can best help you, go to team at goldcityventures.com. And we're so excited to be here serving you all. All right. Thanks, everyone.